Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in the last video we talked all about versioning our RESTful APIs. In this video we will talk about how we can have a clean startup.cs. Uh, and startup.cs is a class in .NET Core which is used to register our services or configure our pipeline. We're going to focus on registering our services in a really clean way here. So as you can see here we have a couple of things about uh, identity and data. Uh, we have our NVC registration here, and then we have a, a, this Swagger registration. This is fine, but in this little method, we're going to add everything about our project, every registration we're ever going to do. So you can understand that this will get very clunky or very fast. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create something called an installer. So let's not create a folder for now where we can move things around. Let's make an iInstaller interface and this interface will have uh, a method and this method will be um, a void method called install services and it will have two parameters. One of them will be the configuration. So I configuration and that's because we're going to need configuration uh, in there but the other one is the service collection and the service collection is what eventually gets wh where eventually our services get registered so we have our i installer class let you know what let's make a folder called installers plural and move our installer there And what I'm going to do is, let's see what we're registering here. We're registering some data stuff, which in includes identity, because these go together. So two lines here. And then we also register Swagger here. Okay. And then we also have MVC. I consider these to be the same thing. So we have two clear separations here. Our MVC stuff and our data stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and create two installers. One will be an MVC installer. And this class will implement the iInstaller interface. And what we're going to do is we're going to move these two lines here. And just import everything. The other one is a new class called, for now, data installer or to be more precise, potentially DB installer. We can change that, don't worry too much. All you have to understand is the pattern of how we can clean up our startup system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna move this one here. And the configuration is used. Now, as you can see, we have two classes here, one for MVC installing stuff and one for database installing stuff. And then this interface, but there is nothing in our startup file. And that's because we're gonna magically install all these interface implementing installers in a single line here. But before we extract this to a single line, let's see how this line would look like. So what we'll do is we're gonna get some file in this assembly. In this case, it's going to be the startup.cs and we're going to get the type of it and we're going to say assembly and then we're going to get the exported types where the type of the i installer is assignable from the current type and the current type is not an interface and it also is not an abstract class and this will give us all the classes 
implementing in installer. So all installers, but not abstract classes or uh, any interfaces. And now that we have our classes here, what we can do is we can say, okay, you have these types, so let's make these type installers because we know already that these types are installers. And we can actually make that here as well. We can say cast to an i installer. And this would convert them to installers, but we can actually do something else, which is interesting. We can use the activator class to create an instance of them. So we, what we do here is we, elect, we select all installers, we make an instance of them, and then we cast them as the interface, which then in return, I don't even have to call them classes anymore because they're instances of objects, they're installers. We can then do for each installer. Simply installer dot install services comma configuration. And that's it. So let's look at this. Let's let's debug the code. If I run this, let's see what happens. We get here, and sure enough, I have two installers, the DB installer and the uh, MVC installer. And then if I run this and I let it complete, as you can see, nothing changed. Everything works. MVC is configured. Our data is configured. We get the same response back. Everything for this project is now configured with these two lines. And what I can do in these installers is I can make a class which is called installer extensions and I can make this will be a static class because we're gonna make extensions and we're gonna extend this interface and we're gonna say public install sorry public void install services in assembly or oh, assemblies let's go with assembly for now and we're gonna make another method in the future when we break down our solution into more projects so for now this is a public static void and we're gonna move this here and we also gonna need the i con fig duration and then we can use this following method and add the configuration and here you go this is a single line of code in your configure services and everything else can go in its respective configuration installer and you're gonna keep your installers clean so let's run this and see if it still works And here you go, everything works again. Our API is fully up and running with everything installed, nice and clean. That's all for today. Subscribe and like this video if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.